Hi, this is Chad Nysville from the band Wilson, and you're watching I'm very excited to be here and go Cubs. That's a freaking huge uh, 108 years since they've even been in the series. That's crazy. So yeah. uh, we're excited. When we were driving in, we saw all the W's and things like that. Yeah. Uh, very, very, very cool. So, um, go Cubs. <laughs> it's been a while since we played in proper Chicago. Uh, I think that maybe that Trivium Tremonti tour last yeah. time. Where was that? Oh, there, that was in uh, uh, Concord. Concord. That was the last time we were here, so that was over a year ago. Um, Great show, great beer room. We, we love playing the House of Blueses, so we've been doing a bunch of them on this tour. So this is, we've never done this one. Uh, we'll see how tonight goes. I like playing in I like playing in the city personally. Um, it's just it's kind of sort of special energy and all that. Yeah. Great man, these guys are awesome. The shows are right up our alley. The, the fans are, are super warming and welcoming. We are kind of worried that maybe they wouldn't be into it, but it's been great. Um, the band themselves have been nothing but a gentleman to us, and their crew's been awesome. Uh, we're pretty blessed and fortunate to be in the position we are. Still, yeah, there's a great band. Uh, you know, we like to have fun, and so do they. So it kind of works. Yeah, <laughs> we, um, we, when we started the band, uh, Jason's the only original member. I came in pretty shortly after that, once it uh, started to take shape and like we were playing mo out more. Um, I, I book bands in the uh, in, in Detroit or whatever, and I booked them, I saw them play. I said, man, this band's really great. They said, oh man, we're losing our singer. I don't think we're going to continue. I was like, ah, just a, could I try out? I've been in bands before. I, mean, I kind of knew um, Jason through the, through the grapevine. Um, the rest of the guys, as the band kind of like formulated and took more of a shape and we started to be uh, more <laughs> serious about what we were doing, not just playing for free beer, uh, the guys who were just really weren't interested in doing that. They left and we started replacing them with people who were on the same page length, uh, same page and wavelength as, as us. And those people, uh, they, they had been playing with us in previous bands before, we had known them through other places. And uh, you know, we just kind of found the right guys. Uh, drugs. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I think you know when the band started out, uh, it started out as a way for us to like have fun, release, and you know it was never we never really thought about where we would, we are currently at when we started. So it was just like just pounding energy, and I really never s was a screamer in a band before. So I, I kind of like at first just kind of like unnecessarily like released all of this built up, I guess, like shit inside. I mean, just because I, I needed to do something and because I felt a little uncomfortable in my own skin. It was, and that just kind of carried over to where we are now. Now it's like just become uh, ingrained in our DNA, you know, that we don't step on the stage and not leave that stage uh, without it being soaked with our, uh, our, our insides. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we kind of got the ship thing. It's been a year since we've done it, so it'll be weird. But for a while, we did those three back to back in less than a year and a half. So it was like we did two ship rocks and one motorboat. So this will be our fourth cruise as a band um, in general. Uh, so we're kind of seasoned as far as that goes, but it's always different, you know. So it's a new ship, for instance, this year. So instead of knowing exactly what our stage layout would be, things like that, right. we don't know. Yeah. So. The, the thought process is yeah, uh, right now we just don't have any dates nailed down because we've been, uh, we s s s uh, switched some inner workings of our band recently, so with that being said, uh, um, we're, we're trying to get the final answer on that, but we've been working it right and we wrote, a, we wrote the whole record, you know, we'll probably write more and there's tons of songs that are, aren't going to probably be able to be used, so uh, yeah, we're just kind of always working in that sort of mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we kind of lean on each other for those sorts of things because every—I mean, everybody's creating all the time. But like sometimes, like there'll be like a couple weeks go by. I'm constantly like just sending like voice recordings, like shitty little voice recordings of me on the guitar, you know, play, singing some melody, and I'll send it to somebody else, and that may or may not spark an idea or, or push them to like come up with something as well. Just uh, you know, hey, that's cool. Hey, I'm gonna jam it out, let's figure it out, and then they write something else that's completely different, and they're like, hey, check out this idea. You know, we just kind of lean on each other like that. You know. 
Hey. Yeah, I mean, it was specifically with those covers um, that we just released, the, 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 the magazine Metal Hammer had hit us up and said, we're doing our 30th year anniversary, and we were putting a cover mount CD on there. On there. We wanted Wilson to be included. It's uh, bands covering other bands that have been in influential uh, to them over the past 30 years. They had come out over the past 30 years. So we submitted a list of five songs that we thought were cool for us to do or whatever, and then they picked one that they liked, and then that's the one we went with. And then with Nazareth, we recorded that record, that song for the record, Right to Rise. It just didn't make it on the record, so we had this other thing put aside. So, uh, you know, because we were talking about like, you know, some songs that we really loved, and the producer and I had and said we'd go for like this song, Hair of the Dog, and everybody else had got on board. So with that, that's how that happened. Then we just sat on it and released both of them at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Now, was that kind of same thing with uh, Back in Black? No. Or was it just uh, something fun to play, just to cover it during the we live did a, shows? We did, yeah, well, how that ACDC thing started off is, uh, so back in Detroit, there's this thing, a uh, Halloween party called Creepy Cheapy. Uh, that's like one of the, it's like a bunch of cup bands covering other bands, or whatever, you know, that one of those things. And Wilson did ACDC. So uh, we had just, to, to help promote the show, we had recorded a little cover of, the, of Back okay. in Black. And then we had played like seven or eight shows as ACDC around Halloween that year. So we just had known these songs for so long, and we knew that it was going to go over well, especially opening up for a band that you know uh, nobody knows who the opener is. We like we got to put a cover in. Just going to let them know who we are, our attitude, right. that sort of thing, and yeah. also familiarity. So that's why that happened. Yeah, I mean, I was doing it at that point in time with the marching bass drum. Right. So it was just like to tie those things. I just started to do it. We just tied those things together. Videos have been kind of cool like that. We utilized. You notice uh, there's a video called "Viking Pussies Fuck Off," where we dig up a, um, a where we dig up a, a, um, a boombox, and uh, that boombox makes its way in every single other one of those music videos, okay. whether you realize it or not, it's there. You know? Yeah, and those are like our fun like little threats. You know? That's why I didn't even realize you mentioned that about in the "Give Them Hell" video. Mm -hmm. Boombox so, is there, right? Boombox is in College Gang Bang. Uh, uh, yeah, right. The rise all. Of them. 